Okay, let's get Jesse added here. Hello, hello, hello. All right. <laughs> I'm excited. I haven't gone on here in a long time. I have a glass of wine because because I want to have a glass of wine. <laughs> um, I'm so excited today. So today I'm going to be focusing on content. Content. What content? So I've been talking to a lot of you. I talk to a lot of my followers on a daily basis. And what I have found is that a lot of us are struggling with content. And so I want to be able to help with that today. So we are going to be, um, me and Jesse, my husband, Jesse, who is very, very good at content. We're going to be talking about what you should be posting to turn your followers into bookings. Let's turn followers into bookings. It's not as simple as just posting. Um, it's not as simple as just posting a, uh, a quote. It's not as simple as just posting your portfolio work. It's not as simple as all that. Hey. Hey. Okay. So I'm just going over this with, with everybody. So, so basically what I was saying was, you know, getting content, the content that converts is not just posting, you know, quotes and portfolio work and all that, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I would say that uh, uh, we unfortunately had to kind of learn that the hard way. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, I really wanted to be transparent here. Obviously, this is an impromptu live. We didn't plan this. We didn't promote this. I just felt like this was a really good idea because um, a lot of our followers and the people who we talk to, clients, uh, potential clients, everybody who we're talking to, everybody's had, having the same issue. Okay, right? So it's, you know, and if they're a client with me, it's an issue before they start working with me and then they figure it out, right? So um, it's content. What the heck do I post? And it's so funny. You know what? It's so funny before we get into this. Like, so I've been talking to a lot of, of uh, beauty girls lately. And some, I can't tell you how common it is where they'll tell me, oh, I hired a coach. And you know what? She told me to post reels. <laughs> and then that was going to be how I got whatever. And it's like, and I was like, okay, so what about the reels? I'm like, no, you, you just post reels and you'd be consistent. Yeah. But it's not even you, for you, it wasn't as simple as just posting reels and being consistent. Right? Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like uh, what would you what would you call it? Posting with a like a like a purpose in mind, or um, in your case, uh, figuring out what what the pain points are of potential clients and making sure that the um, that the content is strategic, almost right. So it's like if you're just posting, uh, I love your uh, what is it called? You don't use it for this for this topic. I love hope marketing. Is that what you call it? Hope marketing. So when you talk about hope marketing, I, I think about like this is, you know, uh, post and pray or whatever, just throwing stuff out there to see what what sticks. Um, but yeah, I think that just just reels are great. So don't uh, hopefully nobody thinks I'm knocking reels. Um, but you've got to make sure that you are like there's there's a uh, there's a purpose in mind there. It's strategic. There's a reason that you're posting specific things. And for myself, I kind of was just posting funny stuff uh, entrepreneur stuff, motivational stuff. And then, uh, only really one of them was actually doing what I needed it to do. And then, so I had to make this adjustment. Um, and that was just in my stuff. That was like, like, you know, like, especially for your, uh, your content, we had to make a major adjustment and it, it was, it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about that. So, you know, I went, I wasn't always this master content creator. Right. I actually kind of had to be bullied into it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so when I first started posting, all I, I was an Etsy shop. Okay. So I was this Etsy shop and this, this, you know, I did custom branding for beauty, um, beauty entrepreneurs. And I did a lot of DIY. So my thing was, 
basically my mission at the time really was focused on creating affordable um, uh, and, and high class marketing for the average, you know, beauty uh, com company or beauty business. And so, you know, for me, my focus was on, you know, volume of products so that people had everything that they needed. I was focused on what the, the stuff that was working in the business. So I was focused on creating new products, uh, doing custom work, customer service, responding to emails, responding to uh, messages. And I was not focused on working on my business. So I wasn't focused on posting. I wasn't focused on the marketing side of it, really. I mean, we did some email stuff, but it wasn't like super deep or anything. So, you know, but we were making money. So I thought it's not important, right? And so, you know, it actually wasn't until I capped out on income. We had, um, we had reached about $40,000 a month and we couldn't get past it. It was just not going to happen. And we ended up investing. We tried like Facebook ads and that was like, no, it wasn't working. Um, we tried, uh, you know, different forms of marketing and, and things just weren't working. And um, my idea of posting on social media was posting my products and po posting portfolio work. So essentially offer posts and portfolio work. Okay. And it's so funny. I was just looking at somebody two days ago who, uh, her platform is Facebook. She likes Facebook. She's a competitor. And she did a post saying, Oh, um, you know, I don't, I don't get what the big deal about Instagram is. It's, I really see it as a portfolio. Okay. Well, that was my opinion before I learned how to actually use Instagram to be able to turn my followers into clients. Right. So, um, you know, just being totally transparent. Um, I just didn't see, I didn't get it. I didn't get the Instagram thing. And I think I remember even you telling me like, you need to focus on it. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, I know you're probably going to get into this, but I, I think when I hear that, right. The oh, portfolio, because I was even one of those, I don't think anyone pushed you to be miss portfolio as hard as I did. I was like, yours, it, like we have sales come through, but the problem with that, as you know, is you're really only selling to people who are who have already been sold are looking to buy and we think oh that's so many people it's actually not right so the real nice part about uh you know hitting pain points uh education being strategic not just posting a portfolio is that you can actually there's this whole demographic of people that you can actually get purchases from who are have not been sold and that's what that does. You kind of open them up. The only people you truly sell to when you're just posting your work are people that are in the market already for a logo or in the wanting labels or whatever. And that's why I love the transition that was made because of course you're going to get the people that are in the market even without posting your portfolio. But it's like this whole uh, ignored set of people, which is the, the people that think they're already good even though they're not having success and they're not making that correlation. And then here comes Erica, boom, with this content. Now all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know what? My logo does suck. Or man, I do need better labels if I wanted to get into Walmart or Target or whatever. And so I, that's why I, I was wrong. I'll be the first to be like, oh, you, you should have, you were supposed to do this, this. I was like, man, I was wrong. It is much better to do it this way. Yeah, so, you know, so, I'm just saying I'm not a know-it-all. I, I get it. Like, I had no idea what to post. So I get it. Like, you think to yourself, okay, if I'm consistent, if I post reels, if I post, yeah. uh, you know, posts showing what I offer, I should be good, right? And that has, that. there's, the problem with that is there's no strategy there. There's no way to dictate that the person looking at your stuff is going to say, Oh my God, I need the, I need her services. I need her help. I got to go to her link tree right now and book. There's nothing going on there. Okay. So portfolio work can, yes, has a purpose. It showcases your work. However, what I have found with portfolio work is that I don't care how beautiful your work is. I don't care if you're a designer. I don't care if you're a, uh, a coach showing, you know, I don't know, like your services and what you offer. I don't care if you're, um, you know, a, a, a lash artist. 
showing her lashes and, and girls, tons of girls with the lashes on. At the end of the day, if you focus on your talents and showcasing your talents, it sets you up for failure because you are, at that point, you are, you are being price shopped with every single person who is just as good as you. And to say that your portfolio is what makes you unique is honestly the wrong way of thinking because that's, that's like you saying that you're the best, okay? Based off of just your work. And I'm sorry, compare, your, compare like tattoo artists. There are some amazing, amazing tattoo artists, but there's amazing tattoo artists in every city. Yep. Right? Yep. So yep. there is not the number one tattoo artist. It's based on location, which a lot of beauty people, they want to be, you know, booked out based on their location. So very similar, right? Yeah, I actually like how you said that price shop because it's, it's so true. It's, it's like... Um... Goodness, uh, almost like drop shipping, right? Like Amazon or something, you know, it's like you're, you're, you don't feel like you're close because it's your Instagram page, but it's, it's, if somebody's in the market, right? And we're talking about the people that are already in the market, it's, they're going to go to you. They're going to go to somebody else. They're going to go to somebody else and make, oh, hey, listen, the work's all like 1A, 1B, 1C. It's all very similar stuff. Cause once you get into that upper echelon of talent of like, of like skill, there are some people that stand out more than others, but ultimately it's like, it's all pretty good. They can all get you a pretty good label. They can all get you a pretty good logo. Websites, right? How many websites? There's like this style that you see these websites. They all kind of look very similar. And so now there are some tweaks. There are some things that like a good artist will do that kind of sets them apart. But like ultimately it's like you get in that upper edge line. But I love that price shopping. Absolutely. Because then all of a sudden, if you're the same, if you're not standing out, if if you're not looking like the expert in your field, you're just posting your work, then all of a sudden it, there's only two variables then at that point. It's, is it good? And what's the price? Uh, and you know, that's, that's pretty much it. That's, and that keeps you in a really small bubble that I think that, um, that I, th I think, you know, you'll have those little sales, but ultimately it's not going to get you to that, that next level that you want to be. Exactly. And so, you know, that being said, you know, so that's, that's honestly the wrong way to think. The second thing that I, when I talk to, you know, beauty girls, graphic design girls, coaches, all these, the second thing that they consider themselves to be unique in is customer service. So they say, oh, well, yes, my, my uh, portfolio brings them in and then my customer service keeps them and it's the most <laughs> unique thing about me. And it's like, you know, it's not hard to be a nice person. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, on time, nice, respectful. It's all like, you know. You, <laughs> you, you, you stand, it's like, what does it say? Give me the shorter list. You, you stand out more if you're, if you're the awful person, right? It's like, cause most people are going to be nice on time, respectful. It's the awful people that kind of get moved to the side. So that's not unique. It's easy. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. So, so that being said, what you said is perfect. Once you, there's like this, um, when it comes to like online marketing and selling online, there's like this level you get to with your talent and then it's no longer, it doesn't matter with your, your talent doesn't matter at that point. At, after that, it has, it, your strategies, your online strategies have to take over Yep. because then you're in this sector of really amazing people, right? So like locally, even locally, let's say that you're in a really competitive market like Los Angeles. Okay. In Los Angeles, everybody's an influencer. Everybody's hot. Everybody is, you know, is focused on online marketing and yeah. you know what happens there. So if you're, you're a microblader or you're a lash tech in Los Angeles, I'm sorry, but at that point, your talent's only going to take you so far. It's just like, um, you know, the women who go to LA and they think that they're going to be famous because they were the best looking girl in their town, in their hometown, in like Iowa or something. It's like, oh, well, welcome to the, the jungle, you know? Um, and that's exactly what it is online is welcome to the jungle. Once you have, you, you, your skills are, will only get you so far. So once you have, you know, those amazing skills, your portfolio work is not going to work anymore because now you're being compared to the other people with good portfolio work and your customer service is not going to be the thing that sets you apart because they have good, good customer service as well if you're a booked out beauty business 
you have a great personality. It's, it's the, the personality thing is only going to hold you back and, and keep you from keeping clients. And you're, you know, before you become a business, a, a girl who's, you know, successful in beauty, whichever service you offer services that you offer, if, if your personality is a problem, that's going to stop you before, you know, your posting does. Okay. So that being said, customer service is just not the thing that can save you in this case. So what saves you is your content strategy, what saves you is the things that you say to your, your potential clients, your followers, and how you make them feel when they are, when they are, you know, checking out your work. And so when it comes to, you know, my, my posts, you know, what's really interesting to me. So when I, again, when I first started, when I used to do this, when I used to say, okay, I'm just going to post my new products and I'm going to post portfolio work, you know, I, I mean, I got people once in a while, I, I definitely got a few people. So, you know, I could have said, yeah, I mean, I think that it's working, but I yep. didn't actually know. So at that, even if it is kind of working, it's still not proof that it works. And it's still not proof that you have a system in place. It's when it's um, so apparent that it, 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 you couldn't stop it if you tried. So for me, I've gotten to the point now where when we're talking to people on a daily basis, when I am speaking with people, I mean, I am just being told, oh my gosh, I follow you for your content, your content, your content, your content, your content is king. I love your content. I, you know, I, I would love to talk to you because your content. And that is it. I have, you know, I, I, I am, it's so clear to me that the strategy is on point at that point, not to mention that I have no problem booking calls and booking clients because of Instagram, okay? When you feel like you're not really sure, oh man, where did this person come from? Okay. Or if you're not even getting people to click on your links in your bio, if you're not getting people to book out for your Instagram, I think those are telling signs that it doesn't work. So the question is, is what do you post right. as, right? So like, what do you post as a, uh, a beauty business, whether you're a product based or you're a service based, I can say that I, I can vet and say that I am actually both a product and a service based business. I am a service-based business because I offer coaching services. I offer branding services and I am a product-based business because I also sell products. Okay. So I sell digital products. I sell even physical products. You know, we've sold merch. We, yep. we sell all sorts of stuff. So I have experience in both. So as one of these beauty businesses, what is it that you're supposed to be posting on a daily basis? So here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you, oh, post reels, post reels, post reels, because reels don't matter at the end of the day if it's, it, it's not for Jesse, you have, you know, you can tell us even you've gotten crazy amounts of views on reels that are like of you and Ollie, like Ollie, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. So, um, I, we've got a second. I can kind of explain this. So I, your dog, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm obsessed with him. He's a miniature schnauzer. He's like my best friend. And, um, so it's so funny. Cause like the, I, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm posting what I think is going to be a home run. I think you're muted. Jesse, I think you're muted. Oh, am I? Oh, you're good now. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry. I was getting a call. So, um, anyways, yeah. I posted what I thought was going to be funny and you know, do, do well, didn't do well. Then I go out there and post something with my miniature schnauzer. It goes mini viral. Uh, then I post something that I think once again, I kind of go away from that. think it's going to do well. It doesn't do well. It's, uh, yeah, the, the miniature schnauzer stuff. Now, obviously if I wanted to take that and go out there and, and make it a service or, you know, have something pet related, uh, which we might, might have some stuff in the works on that, then obviously that would be, you know, that would be a, a good post. But, uh, yeah, when you're, when you're just kind of throwing stuff out there, you know, it's, uh, it can be kind of a struggle. So I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that being said, you know, you can put out 
content that isn't relevant or doesn't doesn't sell to your audience or sell them on you and it can still get good uh, traction and so traction isn't even necessarily likes and what they call um you know uh what is it called um uh i don't know it's basically marketing where you're focusing on likes and and things like that um so you know focusing on that type of marketing doesn't necessarily mean that you're selling your, you're going to be able to sell your services to these people. Okay. So right. just posting reels, um, is not going to be what like saves the day for you. And there has to be a system there. There has right. to be a strategy there. Right? right. No, it's funny you said that too. Cause one of the things that I've noticed, and I'm sure you can kind of piggyback off this, but like, is I'll have something like I've had, I've had a couple reels that have done like, I mean, like, a hundred thousand views like i mean even saying that just sounds crazy yeah. to me like and and they'll they'll be like all likes and like maybe three comments or something like that it's like that sounds great oh my gosh a hundred thousand views give me the give me the like the ten thousand views but like a ton of engagement people actually engaging with the post dming me asking me for you know follow up on that or whatever you know whatever like give me the actual the true engagement, not necessarily the numbers. Cause like you said, Oh, I'll post something with my schnauzer. Oh my gosh, 15,000 views. But like, maybe like one comment says nice dog. You know, it's like, that's that it looks good. The like count is good, but ultimately like, what are we trying to do here? Right. So, you know, the first thing that you want to focus on is, is really diving into what's the purpose of this post. Right. So when you're posting, you want to say, all right, what, what am I, what's, what am I getting out of this post? That's what's going to dictate the call to action. If you're not even doing call to actions in your posts, you got to do call to actions. I mean, there's no point in posting if there's nothing that the person does. Even the call to action can be something as simple as put an emoji if you agree. Okay. Exactly. Makes all the difference. It, it gets the person interacting with you. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I was just on a, a, a live today that was talking about community and building community. And he was talking about the, the guy who was running the live is like, Hey, listen, you know, I'm going to ask you guys, Hey, who has kids here who are, uh, between the ages of five and seven. And then it was like, everybody was like, Oh my gosh, I do. I do. I do. And Oh my gosh, my kids are here. And my kids are here. That creates connection. Yep. between the two of you and we're talking about we're talking about online here we're talking about creating connection beyond like like where we're getting past the screen okay and so when you're when you're doing this thing where you are um you know on the screen and and you think that these people are listening to you and that they should be listening to you the truth is is that you actually have to earn that that year right? You have to earn that. And so um, the best way to start that process is to really include a lot of call to actions. So it's really to include, you know, things where you tell the buyer what to do. You tell, I'm sorry, not buyer, the, the follower what to do. You tell them, okay, here, listen, I really want you to leave an emoji here if you agree, right? Yeah. Because then it goes from the person just scrolling and stopping and being interested to, oh, now they've interacted with you. Okay. So that's, that's one of the things, you know, one of the nuggets I wanted to drop about like content that actually converts into something. Um, the next thing is that I really want to focus on is um, actually creating content that pulls that pain points. Okay. So the connection to the buyer, um, really to turn somebody from a follower or somebody who says, Oh, maybe I'll check this out. Or maybe I'll check her out into somebody who says, Oh my gosh, I trust this person. And I'm going to book this person. I'm going to buy from this person, whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, what, what, in order to do that, what you have to do is you really have to focus on co really connecting that person to the gap between, um, you know, where they are now, to where they want to be okay and so in that case let's say that you are a lash technician okay so a lash technician which is more of a luxurious service it's not a service that like 
you know, like wigs, you can get serious with wigs. You can say, oh, well, you know, we're trying to uh, help this person have more confidence so they can focus on hiding alopecia or, you know, um, uh, even hair is hiding grays. That's like a, grays are a serious <laughs> or um, uh, even growth oil. Okay. So many of my followers sell growth oil. So growth oil is very, very uh, pain point based because you are working with people who are literally, um, who are literally like in pain. Okay. Yeah. And so when it comes to content, when you are posting content, you know, if, a, if you're a lash technician and you're posting content, you really have to focus on, um, you know, honestly, like, what is it that my own people who come to me, what, is, what kind of pain point am I helping this person solve? And it may be something like, okay, she's taught, she wakes up every morning to do her makeup and she wants to be able to sleep in 10 minutes longer. So she, she's got great skin and she just wants to wear the, these, you know, the, she wants to have her eyelashes on and she's done. Even that pain point, if you know that that's something that your target market struggles with, identifying and helping, like helping that person recognize that that's actually a pain that they have is going to get that person to check you out more and follow you and possibly book you. 100%. So focusing on stories right? Not testimonials, not just, oh, had a great service. My, my lash tech, Laura was so great. And the service was awesome. Well, okay. But what about a case study? What about <laughs> something where, <laughs> what about something where we talk about, you know, where uh, maybe Laura um, w woke up every day at 4am to do her makeup. And now, because Laura looks so good with our mega volume set, Laura actually cut her time by like 40 minutes and she could sleep in an hour later. Maybe, maybe Laura's a mom, right? So she actually has to wake up two hours early to do her makeup and then she wakes up and then the kids are up and she's got to make breakfast and then she's off to her day to go to work, okay? She has to look good. Maybe she's a lawyer, okay? She's got to look good. She's got to look uh, presentable for her clients, all right? Um, you know, Laura is now we're talking about an actual case study, an actual story, because stories sell, right? Yeah. We're, we're not just talking about, Laura said that I you know, did a great job and, and blah, 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 blah. That's not going to sell your followers. What's gonna sell your followers is, is these, these stories that focus on somebody was struggling. And now because of you and your services, that somebody is now, you know, uh, has solved that problem. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, stories are huge. I mean, they really are. And uh, what's, the, what's the quote to like, you kind of brought up like that and it made me think of like facts tell, what is the- Stories sell, facts it, tell, stories sell. Yeah, stories are stories are so huge, they, they really are. And, and that's gonna be like what you said, the connection that's gonna like from from where the, the, the struggle, the pain point where you're currently at, assuming, you know, somebody's not loving where they're currently at and then, and then how you're going to ultimately get them to where they want to be. So I, I love that. Yes. So if you think about that, if you think about what is it that I really, what is my mission? What am I here on earth to do with, with this business that I have, right? If you really think about that and, and you align yourself with that, it's really easy at that point to sell. And it's really easy at that point to know what you're gonna post because you're focused around that. Even if you're doing something as light as a this or that, a this or that could be something that has to do with, you know, uh, you know uh, I don't know, curlers, uh, I don't know, lash curler or, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, fake lashes or something like that, right? So now you're talking about, oh, no, 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 no. You know, literally this person's saying, oh, well, I use lash curlers. And, you know, that's what, and then you get that person to say, oh, yeah, I, I interact. So they interact with that, right? And then they're like, well, what else do they have? And they go to a different post. And they scroll a little bit more. And now they go to a different post. And now they hit the case study. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I use lash curlers every day in the morning. Because, and it takes me so long to get ready for work. I am tired. Do you see how now the this or that is purposeful? Definitely. It, it's actually purposeful. And they, the thing is, though, is that you don't do just a whole thing of case studies. This is why you don't do just portfolio pictures. You don't do just this or that. 
You don't do just, um, you know, uh, I don't know, offer posts. It has to be a mixture of all these things and they all work together. And that is why you have to, you know, when it all comes to, you know, what, what do I post? Why do I post? When do I, all these things are all dictated by your mission, your brand, essentially, okay, your brand is your mission, your vision, your core values, your, uh, you know, the visual stuff, the, the stuff I do, the logo and all that, that's last. Yeah. That's the last little bit, okay? If you, the target market, that's your branding, all right? If you don't know who your target market is, you actually, I mean, we all hear it all the day. I mean, I know these IG coaches and stuff, stuff it down people's throats nowadays. Oh, your target market, blah, 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 blah. But like, if, do you actually know them? Do you actually know who you're servicing? You would if you, ha if you were in touch with your mission. You would if you were in touch with what the heck you are here for and why you are lashing or why you are microblading or why you are doing hair. Are you doing hair because you, when you're sitting, when, when your client is sitting in the chair and she sees that, that, uh, that after she, and, and you see her light up, do you love that? What, what made her light up? What was her life like when, before she lit up? What was her life like after she lit up, right? Can we get in touch with that? Can we, and then can we show our audience that and that that is what we care about, right? Yeah, you know, uh, honest moment here, okay? So this is an honest moment. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at a lot of things, especially when <laughs> This is not a, this is not a brag. I promise. I, I'm going to get to where I, it sucks. So I'm interested in a lot of things. I'm, I'm pretty good at a lot of things. I think the problem is, is like, so everyone's got businesses that they run Instagrams with. And so for myself, my, this, this profile that I'm on right now, this is like my main one, my personal one, but also like it's, I don't have like a personal only and then like a business one, you know? Yeah. And so I think one of the things that I kind of run into, and this is the honest moment, is like that it's like you talk about target audience. Well, I've got like, it's almost like a target audience for multiple different things. And I think that that's one of the issues that I've struggled with over the past. And even still today, sometimes when I'm getting ready to post, I'm like, mm, it's like, who am I really targeting here for this post? You know, and it's like some of these things might get, you know, uh, whatever, a few likes. Some of it might do really well, you know, and it, it kind of stinks because it's kind of like, if do I do I, I'm only supposed to be one thing or should I be multiple things? So anyways, if you're if you're listening and you're like, oh, is this me? Uh, you know, I, I like uh, sports, but I also talking sports or whatever. And I like trading cards, but I also like dancing or whatever i don't know just a bunch of different things sometimes it's really hard you know to like kind of find that target audience you know so, what I'm yeah so can um so if i were to like yeah say, here's the response to that sure so this is where when you say that so that means that there's a lack of foundation because sure. you're if your focus a mission um is not actually based off of the who you don't do the who first you do the who and the and and you know all of that la like second second or third really sure so the first thing that you do is you focus on what is your mission what are you here for what do you you know why are what are you doing for people right and then what you do is if, the, if these are the services that you offer if you offer sports betting and you offer trading and you offer crypto and you offer help with podcasting and all these things they all align together with the mission so that they all have to, all the core values of each of these things have to align with the mission. So if the mission is, you know, something that has to do with you being an honest um, person who offers affordable products uh, for, um, you know, uh, people who want to get into that, I, you know, whatever the mission is, okay? Right. Uh, it's, it's not as simple as just coming up with it in five minutes, okay? <laughs> so whatever it is that aligns with that, but it's typically things that are like adjectives about you. So like, you know, you're, you're dependable, you're honest, you're, uh, you know, motivating your, uh, you know, and, and it can even be about like the things that you want them to feel. Then you figure out, okay, the services are just the services and you figure out how this is actually what makes you different. So like, 
there's a million sports bettors out there. There's a million podcasters out there. There's a million coaches out there. What makes you unique is what you believe in. And then when you, when you align what you believe in, uh, with, and you're, when you align your businesses with that, and then you show, you live through that, meaning like your businesses stand for that and you don't go outside of that, then all of it goes together. Yeah. And then, you, you can end up even cross selling to the same audience with different services. For instance, in the case of beauty, you can offer lip blushing and you can offer uh, microblading and you can offer lip filler. They're all different types of clients. I've never gone to my like med spa and asked for, <laughs> you know, like waxing. I just haven't, you know? Um, but I imagine if they offered it, I probably would just get it from them because I love their, I love how honest they are. I love how they tell me straight up how they feel about if I want something and they tell me, Oh, you know what? I don't think you should do that because this is why I believe that they're actually genuine when they speak to me. And that's actually why I would take on, I would buy from them no matter what they were selling. So that's why it actually all starts with you and what you align with. And then whatever you're offering really is going to be something that people are going to want to be a part of anyway. I love it. And I think that's why like, like people like investors, you know, like, and these people who start multiple businesses, they can do that. And I bet you that they, that a lot of them actually have similar, you know, clients in each one of these things because they're sold on the person and their core values and what they stand for. They're not sold on, um, you know, the actual service itself. Cause the actual service itself, if you focus on that, which is why you don't focus on portfolio work, mm -hmm. you focus on just the, that, then you, you do set yourself up to be price shopped and, um, really to just be like another one of the people out there who offer your services. If you focus on you and what makes you different and your personal yeah. brand and you, what you stand for, then, you become this other thing. Great example, I always like to bring up a Starbucks. There's a million coffee houses out there, okay? They're literally on every block. What makes Starbucks different? Why can I spend almost $10 on one drink at Starbucks? It's because of everything they stand for. It's their, everything that they stand for, um, they, they live, eat, and breathe it. And, um, and they make sure that that is, is like pushed through when you, when you go and you sit there, they make, they make sure that they hire specific people. They make sure that they, you know, take care of their people so that their people are treating you well. Um, you know, uh, people used to get written up at Starbucks I, when I worked there, if we didn't, uh, you know, write people's names on their cup. And it wasn't for the, the specific reason of writing somebody's name on their cup. It was so that you could call that person's name out by name and they felt that connection to oh, you. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. Never thought that. So that's a great example of how their core values are trained to the employees and how they instill that. And you can say like, oh my gosh, well, what? Written up? That's, that's excessive. But it's not because it's that serious for them to make sure that they are, you know, that they are personifying, that they're, they're showing that they are this type of a person. So, or, you know, person, company, you know. Um, and sure. so, so that being said, you know, when, if, if Starbucks opened up a Amazon competitor, I probably would check it out. And that's the truth, right? Like, that's like why, like, you know, like with, with somebody like, think about like uh, Tesla. When we think of Tesla, do we think of Tesla or do we think of Elon Musk? Right? Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and it's because Elon Musk is this dynamic person with these core values and these, these beliefs. And it's like, yeah, Tesla's cool. Yeah, I have a Tesla. I love Tesla. It's a great car. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, it's actually the person behind the company that to me, I feel connected with. Sure. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, we're talking about being, not being a good company, but being a great company. We're talking about not being a good beauty business, being a great beauty business, you know, and these are the things that make you great. And I know we totally just went off track from content, but my point is, is that it's actually not as hard as you think to come out with content that converts if you have the right idea in mind and you're not just focused on, I guess, like the money, right? Sure. 
Um, and I'm sure, you know, people say, oh, well, it's easy to say, Erica, you have money and, you know, <laughs> when you need money, that's all you focus on. Believe me, I know. I know. When, when you don't have money, that's all you focus on because that's how I was. I, in the beginning, I, this was not something for me that like was my dream. I just, I just wanted to quit my bartending job. And, you know, but, but the thing is, is that, you know, money can, can, can get you something, but it won't keep you there. Right. So it can get you there, but it's not going to keep you in the door. You know, um, it's not going to get you through the door. So you've got to be able to really at some point say to yourself, shit, I have got to really take this seriously or yeah, at any point, another 2020 could happen and I get knocked out. And so the thing that's going to not going to strengthen you and make you stay afloat is actually going to be the, this inner work that you have to do to, you know, and, and then not just that inner work, you don't just put it in a binder and keep it in your desk and you're done. You live, eat and breathe that every day in your business and you showcase that through your content. And that's how you make a connection and you get people so connected with you that they, they love you. You know, it's, it's so funny you said that too, because it's like the, the focusing on like oh, all, all you think about is money, right? And I think that that's kind of the thing that actually forces us, especially in the, the uh, graphic design industry, right? Um, or it could be beauty too, but like, uh, is like posting, you know, if for graphic designers, uh, posting their work, right? This is what you were talking about earlier. It's like, because it does work, it does work just it's like a short-term fix it's like a enough to get by for the day but if you're if you're chasing greatness you have to be able to separate yourself from everybody else you have to be able to make those connections like you're talking about uh you know showing somebody where they're at the pain point and how to get them to where they ultimately want to be and that can't be done by just showcasing work showcasing work showcasing work so and i think that that's the problem we get stuck in this like little short-term bubble because we know hey listen there are people out there looking for a logo if they happen to come across my stuff and they do like it there's a chance it'll turn into a sale but if you're looking for if you're looking to become great if you're looking to become big uh it's not going to be done through through the showcasing so i'm really glad that you said that as far as like that that constant need of the money and stuff because it's almost like you have to kind of like detach yourself from that and actually develop like solid practices that maybe don't translate i mean how often do you and i talk about this doing stuff that we know doesn't necessarily translate in dollars that second but it's got it's it's worth it you know down the road a week down the road a month down the road even a year down the road you know what i'm saying and transparent moment that used to be so hard for me right right <laughs> right like I used to fight you. And yeah. Like, no, I'm not posting on Instagram. <laughs> Letting people know this stuff. <laughs> I yeah. got stuff to do. I got yeah. real stuff to do. You know? Yeah. It was like, for me, I was like, what a waste of time posting yeah. on Instagram. Who cares? Exactly. You know? But I was so wrong. I was wrong. And, and, and now my business, you know, I'd say like 80% of the income is coming from social media. It's not from my old forms of revenue. Um, I'm sorry, old forms of lead generation. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it, it really, it is there for you if you want it, but you got to actually say to yourself, all right, like I am actually going to give a shit and I'm going to figure this out. And, you know, and, and here's the thing. And I do want to touch on what you just said, because yeah, we're nobody's saying that you can't get clients. You oh, can't no. get bookings by posting portfolio work every day. That's not what we're saying. But at some point, just like me, the chickens are going to come to roost and okay. you're going to figure out that, okay, like this isn't working. You're going to hit a, a plateau. Um, things are going to slow down. Um, you know, something is, or, or something like, as, as you know, God forbid it never happens again, but this is life, you know, something like 2020 happens and it knocks you on your ass and you're like, okay, now I really got to figure this out and I got to pivot fast. If you got a strong foundation, that's not happening to you. That's not happening to you. You're going to be okay, right? You may have to pivot your services a little bit. You may have to come up with different offerings, but, but you're still going to be somebody who your 
your followers, your fans, your, you know, these people who, who give a shit about what you say, you're still going to be somebody that they trust when you say something like, oh, okay, you know, here's how I can act. And if you come at, if you come at it with a genuine, in a genuine way, you know, it's like, you think about like in 2020 when everything was shut down, and I, I, re I recognize that, you know, beauty was a lot of beauty. You could not do the services at that time, right? So a lot of beauty women had to pivot into courses. Why the hell would you do that if you don't have an audience? Mm. Who's gonna buy from you, sure. right? And then on top of that, something like, um, you know, something like when it comes to, um, you know, even something like that where you can't offer your services and, you know, all of a sudden online is the most important thing. How are you able to even offer courses and things like that if you haven't mastered how to even do that yourself, how to even sell online, how to, you know, do that. You, it's just, you got to have a strong foundation when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to your business and content marketing is a big part of that. And I know this has probably been a long sell on content marketing, but it, it really is, you know, probably one of the number one questions I get is what do I post? How do I post? How do I get clients from online? How do I get, how do I get bookings from online? It starts with this. It starts with your foundations. It starts with who you are. Um, and it starts with, you know, you being able to connect the follower to their what's, you know, to what's hurting them. Yep. And then that's when you're, you're on your way to, yeah, a strong content marketing plan and 10,000 followers and all that stuff that everybody cares about. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. Okay, well, I didn't want this to go too long. I have my wine here. Um, and so I'll close this out. But I really appreciate you jumping on here with me because you've had, you know, some a lot of successful content. And, um, you know, and then for those of you who, you know, don't know my husband, this is Jesse. He has started my business with me. Um, he's been with me since day one. And, um, and he actually does his own, you know, he has his own content network. And he actually, for a living, he literally helps podcasts um explode so um check him out when you have a moment and yeah guys all right we'll have a great rest of your saturday and i will see you guys on the next impromptu live <laughs>